Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And many of you had requested me to make a video on Venus and how to analyze Venus in detail, right? So not just superficial house or sign placement. So today we shall discuss uh, with an example horoscope uh, regarding how to analyze Venus in detail using nakshatras, using the Navamsha, and using so many other uh, concepts of astrology, including Astagvarga, okay? And we will try to see if we can come to a conclusion regarding what Venus will do in this person's chart, okay? And therefore, uh, just for a revision, Venus represents uh, your love life, relationships, romance, then all the things related to beauty and creativity and especially uh, in a higher sense it relates to marriage and committed relationships okay, and any member of the opposite sex also so therefore the dashas will tell how the focus of the person changes and the overall horoscope will tell what the person wants in life okay but when it comes to these specific areas venus plays a very key role Okay, so therefore, uh, we, shall, uh, we shall try to do the entire analysis of the, the horoscope using just Venus, okay? So imagine you are Venus, then how will you see, see this world? <laughs> okay, so it's exactly that which we are going to do today, okay? And if you are new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding your Venus, you can go to my website down in the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you like this video, click the thumbs up and share with your friend who is always obsessed about Venus. All right. So I will make more videos on uh, the other planets later. But because many of you requested for Venus, it's here. Okay. So let, my, let me share my screen. Can you see it? Ah, the screen share doesn't have. Ah, there you go. Okay. Let's bring it here. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the uh, horoscope of a person born on uh, 15th of May 1988. And do not go by the name. I have given the name uh, Venus Sharma <laughs> because I cannot reveal the correct name. And the time of birth is 9.45 a.m. Amritsar, India. Okay. And this is a very beautiful horoscope with uh, lots of a uh, lot of blessings i would say okay so first things first uh, let's go to venus later well this was a venus video but before venus you must analyze certain things what are those things the first is always you should analyze the lord of the ascendant okay never forget that don't jump to the planet that is what is the mistake that you always do i keep seeing again and again everything else later so first we see who is the lord of the ascendant and this is the uh, Lagna chart and this is the Bhav chart, okay? So in the Bhav chart, we see uh, Moon is placed because it's four here. So it's Cancer Ascendant and Moon is placed in the 10th house. So 10th house is the house of completion, okay? 10th house is where the sun is uh, at its peak in the noon time. So therefore, Lagnesh in 10, this can mean the person has a strong desire to stay at the top or complete things or, the, or uh, to stay in a place where he or she doesn't like anybody above them. Okay? Now, this is a very good pla placement for self-employment and uh, own work basically. Can be business if the seventh house is linked. But yes, if the person wants to do his own work or business, then it's a very, very, very good placement to have your own consultancy or something like that. Okay, so that means this placement will uh, be uh, heavy over all the, uh, this will dominate the chart, okay, because this is a very strong placement. And then you see uh, what's going on with moon and of course sun, but here we don't need to check moon because moon is already the ascendant lord. So this gets amplified even further, okay. Then we check sun. What about sun? We'll go to nakshatras later, but we are just checking the planets first. So what about the sun actually? Yeah, before coming to sun, I forgot to say about moon. Moon here rules the ascendant okay, because it's a cancer lagna. So therefore, this person uh, can uh, see everything in this world very emotionally. But there, there is a conflict here because again, moon is in Aries himself. Okay, And then we see sun is in the sign of Venus. So that means externally, Venusian things are very important. There you go, Venus comes into the play here. 
and uh, sun is in Taurus. Uh, therefore, uh, this sun also rules the second house, second lord in the eleventh. Fantastic for money. Okay, so now we understand Venus is the dispositor of the lord of the second house. So. Wherever Venus is placed in this person's horoscope. And yes, I would like to give a disclaimer here. Many times you will see these videos and then you will write, oh, in my in my horoscope, my Venus is the same. I have the same horoscope. Venus is not in 12th. It is in 11th house. What will happen? Anything can happen. Okay. Suppose a person is born in USA and then tomorrow you say, no, no, he was born in Australia. I mean, anything can happen. All right. So we cannot answer these questions. If my Venus is in third, what will happen? Okay. So here we see uh, Venus is the uh, dispositor, which means he's Lord of the sign where sun is sitting. Okay? So the dispositor of the sun is very important in general for anybody uh, also, uh, for everybody in fact. And therefore uh, we understand that for this person, yeah, sun represents the physical existence. Okay, The concept of being a king in this world to whatever extent, you know, you may have a small home or a family or a car or a job, or whatever. So that's like your kingdom, whatever you own in this world okay or whatever you have whoever wants you in their life basically okay saturn represents those things which you don't want or who others don't want from you <laughs> sun represents those things which you want and which others also want from you okay so sun is the kingdom basically so the venusian things are very important for this person because it's the sign of Tor uh, taurus which is ruled by venus and now this Venus has gone to 12th house in the Bhav chart, which is the house of expenses. Okay, so this person is likely to have a lot of expenses when it comes to family. Okay, And uh, because it is in the 11th house, it will give him a lot of gain after expenditure. Okay, And 11th house is also the house of happiness. Okay, uh, Not exactly, but it's like uh, external happiness. Okay, 5th house is inner happiness. In, in 11th house is external happiness. So therefore, this person can feel that uh, he needs to be externally happy also uh, and not just internally happy. And therefore, uh, to do this, because the dispositor is in 12th house, uh, he may have a lot of Venusian uh, expenditures, like, for example, eating outside or eating in restaurants, especially because Taurus shows food. And apart from that, if you check uh, the Ascendant Nakshatra, this is a uh, very border. This is zero degrees and it is Punar Vasu. So whenever you want to judge a planet, you should always check where is the ascendant nakshatra's lord sitting from that planet. Okay, That will tell uh, to what extent this planet will uh, help that planet. Okay, So who is the lord of Punar Vasu? Yes, you are right. It is Jupiter. So Jupiter is the lord of Punar Vasu. And uh, if you check in the Bhav chart, Venus is in 12th and Jupiter is in the 10th. So uh, this is placed in the 11th house from Venus. Okay, so if you go from Venus like this, zoop, then 10 houses, then 11 houses. Okay, so this is placed in a Kama Trikon, okay, which means 3, 7, and 11. So whenever a planet is in Kama house, so for example, suppose this person was a Leo Lagna, okay, and Sun was here in the, uh, in the 11th. So from Venus, Sun would be in the 12th house. So this would go to a moksha house actually, okay? Because twelfth house is the moksha house, not from the ascendant, from from that particular planet which you want to judge. So we are talking of Venus here. So we will check where sun is or where moon is, or in this case Jupiter, because we are analyzing the ascendant, okay, from Jupiter, uh, because Jupiter is Lord of Punarvas, and then he is go, he has gone and uh, he is sitting there in the eleventh house. So this means whenever Venus wants to activate the Kama Trikon, which means, you know, enjoyment, external enjoyment, basically, then he will always help Jupiter. But when it comes to Moksha and all this, then Venus may not help because uh, he is not in a Moksha Trikon, okay. And uh, therefore, now we directly go to Venus. Where is Venus placed? Venus is in Gemini. So Venus is in dual sign, okay. So this is important to note. So what does Venus in dual sign mean? Venus in dual signs can mean, um, unless it is Pisces, uh, it can mean that uh, there is a sense of confusion where to go, which means, which, which does not mean the person does not have a goal. It means the person has many options and then the person is unable to decide. Now, will he decide or not? That will depend on the horoscope. Okay, where, where will he decide? What will he decide? 
So this means uh, there's a sense of confusion regarding which path to take. And because this is 12th house, this can also show, you know, our spiritual life and all this, you know, which path should I take and all this. Now, the next thing we should do is uh, check which houses Venus rules in the horoscope. Okay, so Venus has the lordship of the 11th and the uh, fourth house. Okay, but let's go to Bhav chart, which houses is willing. Aha, uh -huh, there you go. Libra has gone to fifth house. Okay, and Taurus has gone to 12th house. Okay, so the lordships must be taken from the Bhav chart. So do not check the Lagna chart. And yes, no, no more confusions about bhav chart. If you have not watched my video, I have my video on bhav chart. Please go and watch. Otherwise, you may be clueless what's going on here. So Venus is lording the fifth house and the twelfth house. Okay, and these two houses, whenever they are linked, this can show that the person is very creative. Okay, so this shows that uh, whenever Venus dasha gets activated, because these are the houses and the placement is itself in the twelfth house. Okay. Uh, it's in Gemini, okay, but it's in the 12th house. No confusion regarding that. It is not in Taurus, disclaimer. Okay, And 5th house, whenever it's linked to the 8th or the 12th, can show a lot of uh, creative stuff coming in. And therefore, uh, this person will uh, get a lot of opportunities to explore his creativity. But now the question is, what is the level of the creativity which this person will have? For that, we have to check the Navamsha. Is the... Is Navamsha's trine somehow involved? Okay, so here we see it's a Vargottama Lagna Navamsha, which means uh, the ascendant is the same in both, and he has Mercury in the ascendant, which can make him a good writer or can make him very expert in convincing others emotionally because uh, it's in Cancer. And here we see Venus is in the fifth house. So, as I said, if this planet is in trines, this shows uh, in the Navamsha, okay. So in Lagna, we check if it is linked with the 5th, 8th or 12th. Okay, So if 5th Lord is in 8th or 12th, 12th Lord is in 8th, uh, so, sorry, 12th Lord is in 5th or 8th Lord is in 5th, then this creativity can be there. But then there are many creative people. Some people just sing in the bathroom. Sometimes people sing between 10 people or sometimes people have, you know, 1, one million people listening to them. So therefore, uh, this will show the level of creativity, okay? So we'll come to that thing later, but let's check. So Venus is in trines here. It is in Scorpio, but it is in the uh, fifth house. So this shows uh, talent specifically regarding to painting and uh, drawing, basically arts. So okay, specifically this thing. And because it is in Scorpio, uh, it, it can be related to you know separation between uh, members of you know like members of the opposite sex, like you know like. Uh, two people getting married and you know getting divorced or something and this person really loves to you know write and you know draw all this you know like break up separation and all this it's like he totally gets into it and uh, Ketu is also involved so Ketu can give a very deep intuition so this person sometimes suddenly goes and you know starts drawing and starts you know, like he suddenly gets intuition and he feels that oh this is going to happen so he just goes and draws okay but now will this become like a career well of course not. Why? Because this Venus has nothing to do with the money houses. If you check, okay. In fact, this is this is in the Lord of the Twelfth and in the Twelfth. So this can, in fact, hurt his finances. Okay. So we have to warn this person that do not do not get too much into this. You know, uh, depressive state where you are just thinking negative things about you know life or relationships, and by that you can harm yourself. So. This is how you should identify uh, if a client is asking to you that, oh, I have an exalted Venus. Will it be good, good or me, good for me or bad for me? So in this case, this Venus will not help in matters of career, and this will not help in overall life also. Why? Because the Lagnesh is placed in the tenth. Okay, so this uh, this goes one step ahead actually. Okay, so therefore we should warn this person that. Uh, Make sure you uh, do it, but uh, you just don't keep doing that all the time, okay? Because this and because this is in Scorpio, this can drawing all these things can uh, give a lot of depression, actually, okay? We just need to warn the uh, the client or uh, caution the person, okay? Not that he or she cannot do, but just be careful with it. Then we see the uh, nakshatra which is Mrigashira. Mrigashira has this endless quest for search and trying to find external happiness and Rahu is currently in Mrigashira. 
so <clears throat> so what's going on here so who is the lord of mrigashira it is mars okay so where is mars placed so if you check in the bhav chart mars is in the eighth house all right so again this deep creativity is coming in the life of this person because the eighth house and the twelfth house these two houses are linked somehow and because these two houses are involved, this can uh, give a lot of depth to creativity and thought process for this person, all right? So therefore, uh, whenever this person thinks of creative, uh, things of love, romance, or marriage or relationships, this person always wants to be very deep. This person doesn't like, uh, may not like superficial relationships, okay? They, they, they just want uh, things to be very concrete. And then we also check uh, what are the other placements uh, like for example we check the fifth house so who is the fifth lord here in the bow chart it is venus all right so that we already checked then who is the ninth lord ninth lord is uh, saturn here in the bow chart and where is saturn placed saturn is in the sixth house okay aspecting this venus here and aspects should be taken from the lagna chart so <laughs> saturn venus mutual aspect they say this is the most dreaded yoga in astrology so what does this mean uh, when saturn and venus are linked which means uh, they are conjunct or they are aspecting each other or they are sitting in each other's signs parivartana then it can mean that uh, your expectations in relationships may not be fulfilled up to the mark which you want this can or it can mean uh, there is like uh, quite quite a bit of difference between you and your spouse ex externally. So there may be a lot of age difference or your community, uh, caste, creed, religion could be different. Or it could happen that you are, uh, you, are uh, you are staying with a person who is emotionally deprived, okay? Or externally doesn't have that much resources, okay? But that doesn't become a problem. That only becomes a problem if the seventh house is also spoiled or something like this. Okay, seventh lord is not well placed. So many people will have Saturn Venus conjunct. So therefore, uh, we cannot just say that this combination is bad. Okay, now this is in the six twelve axis. So celibacy is seen, and twelfth uh, house is also bad pleasure. So this is like you know, uh, it's like saying the person if he does not find uh, fulfillment in. Uh, in in his like you know romantic life or physical enjoyment then this person tends to follow celibacy so this person tends to say oh i'm not happy leave it i won't get into relationships you know i won't get into love affairs i won't marry something like this and uh, this this can actually end up giving a lot of depression to the person okay so now suppose this person uh, gets into depression then what kind of things he's likely to do okay so, for example, uh, that we can see from the sign, okay, the sign where a planet is will tell what kind of activities will that person do if that person is in depression. So, for example, this person has Venus in Gemini and Gemini uh, relates to communication. So, uh, they can become too much of a social media addict, okay, keeping on checking their Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, YouTube, LinkedIn all the time, okay. So that is how you know what the person will end up doing if there is a indication of depression, okay? And is this good for the person? Well, definitely not. So we, we need to warn the person that you are very focused in life. Your Lagmesh and Moon is in the 10th and your Sun is in the 11th. So that these are very good placements. And uh, the Navamsha is giving you a lot of creativity. And if you also... Uh, check the Astag Varga. If you see uh, this Gemini here, it's 19. Okay, so if you check, Sun is contributing quite a bit. Okay. So that means uh, whenever Sun contributes to the sign where Venus is, so that can make a person very show off. Okay, <laughs> because the traits of the Sun are coming into it. Okay. Uh, what about moon moon is not contributing that much and we see jupiter venus and saturn they are, are contributing quite a bit okay so uh, jupiter i mean uh, venus himself is there uh, three points okay uh, so therefore we can say that because of this uh, jupiter venus contributing quite uh, quite significantly so this person inherently wants to be happy in relationships okay inherently he or she wants to be good and do good to others all right so this person is not a bad person he or she wants to be good but uh, to what extent will he be happy or not that the dashas will tell all right 
So this is how you analyze and you can also check the Navamsha for more details and you can also uh, do more analysis on Raj Yogas and all this, all right? So this is a way how you can analyze one single planet, okay? And then you can understand in detail what kind of karmas this person might have. So for example, in this case, we see uh, creativity is very important, you know, and then uh, sometimes this person may tend to follow celibacy out of frustration. You know, so that can cause more depression to the person, okay? And what kind of activities the person may do if the person is not happy in getting into social media? And uh, what kind of things the person may do as a matter of creativity? So it's the fifth house here and it's Scorpio. So it can be related to separation and tears and suffering basically, okay? So this is how you should analyze your Venus. So these, these are the themes which will uh, revolve around uh, his life whenever Venus gets activated, okay? and also the houses which venus rules okay so all these things are important and doing meditation is very important for this person because it's in the 12th house all right so there are multiple things which we can discuss but this is just a start video uh, to analyze how to how, how to see your venus basically okay so therefore when you are uh, doing a consultation uh, for somebody or for yourself then you must always check uh, Venus okay so don't, don't just say Venus is in 12th house it is bad or good but you have to you have to actually understand what is happening okay you may not explain to the client what is happening but you have to understand yourself so that you can uh, see how other things are playing out therefore analyzing a horoscope takes hours actually okay so for example here you can analyze Sun you can analyze Mercury so I am uh, curious to know what do you think uh, will be the effects of the other planets so you can take any one planet okay so write it down in the comments what do you think uh, the plus points or the challenges for the other planets are so you can take Jupiter you can take moon then just write it down in the comments all right thank you very much for your patience and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want to see the Navamsha series or or the Venus series which Vishti Larsen did you can check it here okay God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to the website down below. Okay. Thank you very much.